Prophet Muhammad is the center of devoted Muslims' lives. They are proud of him. They brag about his successful plundering with his gang of bandits. They don't mind if the Prophet killed, violated, plundered, and enslaved non-Muslims. But, there is one thing which Muslims don't like to talk about concerning him, and that is his embarrassing death. Not known to many people, the Christians actually had a silent role they played in his death and even the demise of his family. It all started with the meeting with the Prophet that ended up with the Mubahala. What is Mubahala? Mubahala means invocation of Allah's curse to reveal who is lying. The event was related with the Christian people at Najran, present-day Saudi Arabia, in the month of Tul Hijjah, 10 AH, Anno Hijriya, which is October 631, according to Encyclopedia of Islam, 2nd edition. Prophet Muhammad sent a letter to the Christians at Najran to accept Islam or pay jizya. Jizya is a security money to the Prophet Muhammad and his Muslim army. If they didn't pay, Prophet Muhammad would attack them. In response to that letter, a Christian delegation was sent to meet the Prophet in Medina. The leader of the Christian delegation was Abdul Masih. When they met Prophet Muhammad in Medina, they discussed the belief about Jesus, whether he is a prophet or God reincarnated. Jesus is nothing more than a mere human being. Quran, Surah Ali Imran, verse 59. Indeed, the example of Jesus in the sight of Allah is like that of Adam. He created him from dust, then said to him, Be. And he was. Well, he is not just a mere human being, because he is also the Word of God, and Spirit of God live within him. The debate lasted for two days. At the end of the day, Prophet Muhammad got mad at the Christians and challenged them for a cursing competition, so that the liars can be directly punished by Allah, or God. Quran, Surah Ali Imran, verse 61. Now, whoever disputes with you, O Prophet, concerning Jesus after full knowledge has come to you, say, Come. Let us gather our children and your children, our women and your women, ourselves and yourselves. Then let us sincerely invoke Allah's curse upon the liars. By Quran, Surah Ali Imran, verse 61, the challenge of Mubahala is declared. The Christians never agreed to this Mubahala. It's getting late. We would like to leave and meet you tomorrow morning. The Quran Tafsir says that the Najran Christians thought that Muhammad was a real prophet and therefore they were afraid to accept the cursing competition. But that is not possible because the Bible forbids Christians to curse anyone. We know from the Bible that no Christian will ever engage in such cursing. True. The Bible is replete with strong words against cursing another. Yes, for instance, Luke 6, verse 28. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Matthew 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you. James 3, verse 10. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. We cannot accept that challenge. The Muslims somehow think that the Christians withdrew from this so-called competition because they were afraid of Muhammad's power. In reality, the Najran Christians could easily realize that he was just a false prophet. Had Muhammad been a true prophet, the curse would have made all Christians to have obliterated faces, turning backwards, as what Prophet Muhammad said in Quran, Surah An nisa verse 47. O you who were given the book, believe in what we have revealed confirming your own scriptures, before we wipe out your faces, turning them backwards, 
or we condemn the defiant as we did to the Sabbath breakers. And Allah's command is always executed. The next day, the Prophet came out with his daughter Fatima, his son-in-law Ali, and their two sons, Hassan and Hussein for the Mubahala. When I supplicate, you say Amen. O Abu Qasim, we have agreed not to do the Mubahala. Please keep your religion, and we remain in our religion. After that, they left to go back to Natron. Had they set out and performed the mutual cursing, they would have gone home and found neither possessions nor family. And they would have been consumed by fire. Later, the Prophet asked them to pay jizya with 2,000 clothes per year. Remember the people who participated in the Mubahala along with Prophet Muhammad, Fatima, daughter of Prophet Muhammad, Ali, son-in-law of Prophet Muhammad, Fatima's husband, Al-Hassan, grandson of Prophet Muhammad, Al-Hussein, grandson of Prophet Muhammad. The Quran does not say anything about the time frame of the Mubahala effect. However, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in his voluminous Fath al-Bari fi Shar Sahih al-Bukhari wrote, Some of the benefits of this hadith is that one can do Mubahala with an opponent if he insists, after losing the argument. What is known by experience is that one who takes part in Mubahala to support falsehood, will not survive its first anniversary. The Mubahala happened in October, 631 AD. Prophet Muhammad died a painful death on the 7th of June 632 AD, or before the completion of first year of the Mubahala. Point to note. According to Ibn Hajar. What is known by experience is that one who takes part in Mubahala to support falsehood will not survive its first anniversary. And Muhammad who cursed the Christian delegation, died approximately in a year. Does it not raise serious questions on Prophet Muhammad's claim to be a true prophet, even by Islamic criteria? Sahih al-Bukhari 4428 Narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailment in which he died, used to say, O oh Aisha! I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Kaibar, and at this time, I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. Prophet Muhammad died in the same way he prophesied he would die if he was a false prophet. Consider the following verse of the Quran. Quran, Surah al haqqa verse 44-46. Had the Messenger made up something in our name, we would have certainly seized him by his right hand, then severed his aorta. The Bible proves Muhammad was a false prophet. The Mubahala proves Muhammad was a false prophet. The Quran and the Hadiths prove Muhammad was a false prophet. Shortly after the death of Prophet Muhammad, Fatima, his daughter was killed. After Prophet Ali, Muhammad died, Umar and Abu Bakr demanded Ali united, to swear the oath of allegiance to Abu Bakr. To force me or to accuse me anything. Let me think first. Give me some time. Why you are so desperate? But Ali refused to comply with their demands and left them to go home. Abu Bakr and Umar and their army come to Ali's house. The house was surrounded by an armed band led by Abu Bakr and Umar, who threatened to set it on fire if Ali refused to come out. I have to defend myself against them. This situation made Ali's wife, Fatima, very angry. At that time, Fatima was pregnant. How dare they treated us like this? When Ali did not come out, Umar violently entered the house of Fatima by breaking the door and fell upon her. This not only aborted her unborn child but also caused enough injuries which later led to her death. Fatima also died in the same year as Prophet Muhammad. 29 years after the death of Muhammad, Ali was also killed. Abdur Rahman bin Muljam was one of the Karji soldiers who hated Ali. He planned to kill Ali who would lead a prayer in Kufa Mosque. He soaked his sword in deadly poison for three days. 
On the morning of the 19th of Ramadan of the year 40 AH, Ali came into the great mosque of Kufa, and he lead the prayer. Standing in the front row, with other worshippers, were Abdur Rahman bin Muljam. When Ali prostrated, bin Muljam attacked him with his sword. He struck fatal blows at his neck, forehead with such deadly force. When people found out about this, they tried to help. His sons, Hassan and Hussein, carried him to his house. A physician came, and tried to dress the ghastly wound but could not stop the bleeding. Ali died soon after that. Ten years later, it was Hassan's turn to meet his demise. Muawiyah was the governor of Syria and he was the enemy of Ali and his children, Hassan and Hussein. Muawiyah conspired with Hassan's wife, Jada. She was made to give Hassan some poison which affected his liver. Hassan later died on the 28th Safar, 50 AH. Ten years later, it was Husayn's turn to meet his demise. Yazid I succeeded his father, Muawiyah I, and became the caliph in 680 AD. The Shiites in the city of Kufa in Iraq felt the leadership of the Muslim community rightly belonged to the descendants of Ali. They invited Usain to take refuge with them, promising to have him proclaimed caliph there. al Husayn accepted the invitation. He brought his family and 72 soldiers to leave Mecca and go to Kufa. Yazid I found out about this and he contacted his ally Ubaid Allah governor of Al-Bara, to confront al Husayn. Obeid Allah sent 4,000 army, under the command of Umar ibn Sa'd, son of the founder of the city Al-Kufa. They confronted Al-Husayn and his family and his army in Kabbalah, west of the Euphrates River, on October 10. Al-Husayn and all of his people died terribly. Prophet Muhammad and the rest of his family that participated in the Mubahala died under tragic circumstances. All of them were killed in unexpected ways. Bahala against the Christians of Najarin in October of 631. He thought he was the winner when the Christians didn't come around. Instead, he died in June of 632. Less than a year from the Mubahala. He said a lie, cut as they ordered the pain that made him holla. Seems like the Mubahala got him instead because he was a liar. Now, how about that? All his family that came to the Mubahala Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein died in terrible ways. Because those who live in lies are the ones who pay The prophet said in Quran that Allah will cut his aorta If he made up Allah's words But then in Bukhari he claimed Allah had done just that And it caused him to die One true thing Muhammad said is Allah curses those who lie The Mubahala, Quran and Hadith all prove Muhammad was a prophet quite false and untrue Now that you know the truth what are you gonna do? Now you know the truth, so what are you gonna do?